<laughs> Come on, let me hear you shout for Jesus now. Hallelujah! Come on, let him let them hear us here in Nashville. Hallelujah! Come on, let's roar like the lion over the tribe of Judah. Come on, there's a lion's head roaring over this region right now. If you're watching online, feel the roar of God's people. Woo! Oh, it's going to be like that, isn't it, huh? It's going to be like that. Before tonight is over, whether you're watching online or you're here in the room or the overflow, we are going to go into a realm of God's glory that you have not seen before. If I know anything about Jesus, the most miraculous happens in overtime. It's when everybody else goes away that he, re he, he reserves the... Oh, does somebody hear me out there? Is this microphone up? It's when the crowds have dissipated a little bit that Jesus reserves the highest level of the miraculous. And so something is going to happen tonight where we are going to pivot into the glory of the Lord. We're going to pivot into what's next. Tap your neighbor and tell him what's next. There's always a next. There's always a next. We go from glory to glory to glory. I know some of y'all are nursing and rehearsing revelations from 2012. But in 2023, there's a fresh anointing. There's a fresh revelation. There's a fresh impartation. There's always a next. I know your pastor didn't like deliverance, but there's always a next. You can deny it, but you can't stop it. There's always a next. And we're going to step into that next. This has been about identity. Everybody say identity. Blow up the comment section in the chat right now and type the word identity. This has always been about identity. When I look at your faces, I think about your ancestry. I think about your mother and your father's side. I think about what you inherited. I think about the characteristics and the traits, both good and bad. Some of you are musical because you had a musical family. Some of you are preachers because there's a multi-generational lineage of preaching. Some of you have a multi-generational lineage of addiction, alcoholism, divorce. But it's always been about identity. It's always been about in the garden, going back in Genesis, the question was about identity. Will you walk with the Father? Will you commune with Him? Will you receive and learn from Him? Or you, will you partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? It's always been about a perversion, a distortion of identity. And so if you were to ask me, Pastor Mike, you learned the ministry of deliverance as a teenager in South Chicago. It's been 25 years that you've been casting demons out all across the world. Did you ever think that you would sit next to your mother in a movie theater and see Apostle Pagani cast out demons? across the silver screen. Did you ever think that the thing that we were persecuted for, the thing that my pastors put in the back room and hid, never mind the fact that deliverance always happened in full view of the public in scripture, but we have to hide it in the church. If I ever, 25 years, Greg, of me being the weird guy casting out demons, did I ever think that my face would be on a movie poster? Well, there is a remnant that doesn't do ministry for income. We do it for the outcome. There is a group of people that do, don't do it to be seen. We do it so that his name is known and Christ is revealed in the earth. There is a people that been in the back, but the first shall be last. And the last. 
shall be. It's a reverse. Somebody shout, it's a reverse. This has always been about identity. If you vape, it's because you view yourself as the type of person who vapes. If you cheat, it's because you view yourself as the type of person who cheats. It's always been about identity. And so what the Lord did with this deliverance movement is he began to go back in and deal with ancestral identity. He began to go back into the layers. My God, I feel the anointing. He dealt with things from your grandfather that your grandfather didn't deal with. He dealt with things that your grandmother didn't deal with through you. Some of you on behalf of your lineage said, God, forgive us for we have sinned. Some of you carry a genetic lineage of those that have died before you and you say their mouth can no longer speak, but let their genes speak through me on behalf of my bloodline. It may have run in my family, but I am where it runs out. Are there any generational bloodline curse breaking wild ones up in the tent? The world is watching. They're saying, how could they stay up in that tent? How could they be sweating all those days? Homie, did you see me when I was a sinner? I would have out sinned you when we were sinning. Did you see what I did for the devil? Do you know how I sweat for perversion? Why can't I sweat for the glory? What? Oh, I'm among some friends tonight. I'm among. They said, aren't you going to get wore out? I used to not sleep for days. I'm time. It's time for intercessors to rise up. It's time for all night prayer vigils. It's time for us to go in deeper because this thing has always been about identity. See, let me tell you a secret about your lineage. Let me tell you a secret about your lineage. The secret is addiction is worship perverted. And so you come. Addiction is worship perverted. So you thought you came from a lineage of, of addicts. You came from a lineage of Nazarites that never accepted their vow. And so God brought a deliverance movement to recalibrate identity. And it didn't matter what mega church seeker sensitive got my program dialed so much that the only person who can't participate is Jesus Christ himself. They didn't like it. They ignored it. They tried to act like it didn't happen, but they couldn't stop it. And so now we're here in this new era, and it's still seeker sensitive, but it's not us seeking people. It's people seeking him now. We're sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We're sensitive to what he wants to do. We're sensitive to what he wants to say. And comfort is something that we're not longing for because in the last era, we got a cup of coffee and a bagel and a welcome package for church, but we left with our hands full and our souls full of demons. But give me the presence of God. I don't need your bagel, pastor. I don't need your coffee, pastor. Don't give me a welcome package. I need a deliverance experience. I don't need comfort. I need freedom. And deliverance is here to stay. 
celebrity pastor. You want to remain a celebrity? Learn how to do deliverance because I'm voiding out your tactics. I'm voiding out your strategies. And the way that we catch fish, it's not with a good graphic and a great worship team. It's with the anointing of God. It's with the power of the Holy Ghost. It's with Bible teaching, unapologetic. Woo, come on. It's always been about identity. <laughs> Y'all, I'm not tired. <laughs> I'm going to keep going if you keep going. <laughs> Pastor Greg, early on in my ministry, demons used to say things like, you don't have any power to cast me out. Who are you to cast me out? You're a sinner. And then I realized, demons lie. And I'll never forget the first time that that registered because the Holy Spirit said, Michael, I've been doing something in your identity. And so what I'm giving you tonight in this deliverance training, equipping, and activation is not another ritual lest you repeat it and make a ceremony that becomes akin to religion. But what I'm giving you is an impartation of identity. Because when you know who you are and you operate within the realm of identity, I'll never forget digging my heels in. This is young Mike Signorelli with a curly mop of dark brown curly hair. Bring it back, Lord. Recreative miracle. <laughs> another, I saw another bald guy go like this. I heard Paul was bald, though, so I'm in good company. And I remember digging my heels in and I said, devil, you're a liar. That means the opposite of what you said is true, which means I must be a blood bought believer. I must be a man of God and I take authority over you and I command you up and out in Jesus name. And I remember that demon saying no. And I said, yes, it's always been about identity. And you know, now that I'm getting a little bit older, I was in the UK recently. I was with my friend Jenny Weaver and Stephen Weaver. Y'all know them? And it was funny because, now I just want to say on record, Stephen Weaver is full gangster. Because we had a thousand people packed into a 400 person venue and we were having a holy moment and this woman ran through the crowd and she was screaming and, and Stephen Weaver jumped in front of me, was willing to take a bullet for his homie. So if you're watching, Stephen, thank you. But I'm also gangster. And I was like, no, no, if there's going to be drama, I'm going to be in the front of it. <laughs> and you can see on the footage, I said, no, Stephen, I'm taking this one. And the woman was shouting, the demon and the woman was saying, leave the UK, get out of the UK, go back to New York, go back to where you're from, man of God. And I said, well, at least now in this stage of my ministry, the demons are telling the truth. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going back to New York City, but you're going to the abyss right now. I'm not leaving, you're leaving. I'm not backing up, you're backing up, devil. Up and out. It's always been about identity. Oh, Lord. I'm just preparing you for the realm of glory that we're headed towards at the conclusion of this conference. Should we show the trailer real quick? Okay, let's do this. Get your Bibles ready to go to Judges chapter 16, verse 1 through 4, Judges. Now, anytime a preacher tells you to go to the Old Testament, you should get scared because they know the Bible. Judges chapter 16. I want you to do something before we show the movie trailer. How incredible was come out in Jesus name. I am living in the locks. Yes, because they said yes 
the tip of the spear went into culture and Hollywood for the first time legitimately bent their knee to the gospel and movie theaters were filled with the message of the gospel and, and, and vomit, by the way. And because you said yes, and because your family said yes, I'm able to live a trailer park kid with a single mother, five kids on welfare, is able to now live in your yes. So I thank you, sir. Come on, y'all. So we're going to basically do our version of the Marvel Universe redeemed. <laughs> and I don't know, Pastor Greg's more like Wolverine or something. I don't know. But this movie, now here's the thing I want to say. I want to give you a number to text me because I need to get a hold of you to give you the information because here's the thing about it. We're going to have more movies. How many of you believe that we just need to keep putting out movies? And Hollywood doesn't care about your message. They care about your money. And so we got to fill these places. And so here's what happened. At the end of October, October 23rd, this movie is going to premiere across America. They also gave me 30 minutes. And they said, if we gave you a 30-minute live stream syndicated across America, what would you do with it? And I'm like, well, how much time do you have? And I said, we would cancel suicides all across America. I said that. I would call people to give up drugs and paraphernalia all across America and surrender their addictions. And of course, we would cast out demons. And they said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so I want everybody under the sound of my voice and watching online to shoot me a text right now so that we can stay connected both for this movie, for Greg's next movie, and keep this train rolling. So are you ready? Now, this is a New York number. It's not a, it's not a spam number. Area code 347-329-3476. And just say hi or something. 347-329-3476. I'm going to do it a couple more times. Area code 347 329 three, four, seven, six. And you can spam the chat with that. And I want everybody to join this text community for one reason, so that we can continue the momentum of come out in Jesus name into Domino Revival into the next one. And we're going to keep this train rolling. Somebody's asking, do you really, te do you really text people back in this? I actually do. I can't get to everybody all the time, but I send videos and voice memos and freak people out. 347 329 3476. I'm going to jump back into my sermon and then we're going to go into the outro portion. But how many of you want to see the trailer? Okay, so give me your undivided attention. Let's point our attention towards the screens. Domino Revival. The Bible isn't the story of what happened. It's the story of what always happens. Society is attempting to redefine right and wrong. God's people are being faced with the decision. Do I bow in fear or stand for truth? It might look like it's dark. It might look like it's impossible. But I say I serve a God who deals in the impossible. Nothing is too hard for him. At his words, demons tremble. The pastors already think I'm crazy, so I don't have anything to prove to anyone anymore. The doctors told you, you'd always be on medication. You want me to just keep going? That was better. We're good? I'll just keep rolling. Okay. Even more of a reason to text me. Okay, there we good. The All Bible right. isn't the story of what happened. It's the story of what always happens. Society is attempting to redefine right and wrong. God's people are being faced with the decision. Do I bow in fear or stand for truth? It might look like it's dark. It might look like it's impossible. 
but I say I serve a God who deals in the impossible. Nothing is too hard for him. At his words, demons tremble. The pastors already think I'm crazy, so I don't have anything to prove to anyone anymore. The doctors told you you'd always be on medication. The surgeons told you there's no procedure. You need a physical healing in your body, but I want to give you the healer, not just the healing. This is about the gospel. The reality of God should change everything about our life and the world around us. There were moments where I would cry, and I'd say, Lord, what am I doing wrong? Power went off, and about seven people ran forward with knives. When I was making all these TikTok videos, and no one had any idea that I almost lost my life. I thought this is legit. Is it legit? What are we going to even do? Our nation and the nations are in revival right now. And what we do is really important. We can like quench this thing out really quickly. I'm putting on the boxing gloves and I'm going out and going to war against every unclean spirit. Devil, you might have power, but I've been given all power. You are empowered by Jesus Christ. We've worked with close to 5,000 churches. Pastor Mike, you are the fastest growing church in America. God is literally doing something here that we have never seen happen before. God preserves a remnant to bring a revival. We need the glory of the King. I will pay whatever cost I have to pay because I will not give that which cost me nothing. Come on. America, it's time for revival. Who's ready to take over every theater in America? Who's ready to drop another domino? Oh, it's about somebody willing to say yes. Greg's yes became my yes. And who's next? I can guarantee you that you're going to invite some of your friends. When we were singing that song, and you're such an incredible worship leader, by the way. Greg was saying, save my family. How many of you are believing that your family will be saved? It's always been about identity. And see, some of your family members don't look at themselves as a church person, so therefore they won't come to church, even if it's an incredible church like this church. But God will do something like getting them into a movie theater and then change them and transform them and then get them into the church after that. And so this is part of the revival that the devil has used the movie theaters per for perversion, but wherever there's perversion, there's purpose. And see, what happened is it's a Holy Ghost hijack because they'll go to the theaters, but it's in the theaters where they're going to find the transformation. Oh, does somebody believe what I'm saying right now? Yeah. Judges chapter 16, verse 1 through 4. Now, I want you to read this with me because this message is a message to the deliverance community. I felt the Lord provoke me to finally take my rightful place as a general in this mission. And I'm telling you, I've been tarrying for a very long time in this space. I've seen ministers come and I've seen them go. And somehow, my wife says I've got a cockroach anointing. She's like, there's something about you, Mike. You got that cockroach anointing. The nuclear bomb drops and you come crawling right out. I don't know if anybody here has got that cockroach anointing. I'm not the smartest, I'm not the fastest, and I'm no, not the most articulate. But drop a nuke and baby, I'll come crawling out the rubble. And so there's a, there's a gravity on this message because I am stepping in as a father of the faith to speak into a community 
that I have loved and devoted my entire life to, to the detriment of many other levels according to the false church. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. And so I'm going to say this with the loving kindness of the Heavenly Father, but compassion also comes in the form of two slaps and a hug. (laughs) And if I'm ever funny in a sermon, it's only to get you laughing enough so that I can get in proximity to cut you without you realizing you've been cut. And you're like, he was so funny. And and yes, you're bleeding. (laughs) But my goal is to cut out the cancer, not to kill the person. Because I want you to remain. My heart is that we all remain in this. But I want to show you some things that the Lord showed me. And then the Lord's going to mark us. And then we're going to pivot and transition into the glory. And then we're going to have a historic moment together. Judges chapter 16, verse 1 through 4. Samson went to Gaza, and there he saw a prostitute, and he went into her. The, Ga- the Gazites were told Samson was, you know, Samson has come here. Then they surrounded the place and set an ambush for him all the, all the night at the gate of the city. They kept quiet all night, saying, let us wait until the light of the morning. Then we will kill him. But Samson lay till midnight, and at midnight he arose. He took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts, pulled them up. These are the gates of the city. Pulled them up, bar and all, and put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron. After this, somebody say after this. After this, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. So let's get the facts straight. He goes and sees a prostitute. This is a Nazarite. This is someone who made a vow before God that they would remain pure, sanctified, set apart. And he goes in to see a prostitute. Do I need to explain to anybody here what a prostitute is? It's a woman that gives sexual services in exchange for money. See, curses multiply. You think it's just about sexual perversion, but there's also a curse upon his finances. Curses multiply. The math of generational curses is an exponential, not incremental math. And then the Bible says that when you commit sexual sin, it's a sin that you commit against yourself. And so now you're dealing within the realm of the mind. And so now there's more than just prostitution. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Then they lay ambush for him. He then rises up in full anointing and power, takes these gates of the city, and he begins to run with them in in just an incredible demonstration of the anointing and power of God. Now, normal people... Think about somebody trying to kill you tonight and then God supernaturally gives you the ability to pick up a car and throw it in another direction and you are spared. What is the natural conclusion to that event? God, I am so sorry I slept with that prostitute, but you just saved my life and I ain't never doing it again and I shouldn't have been saved, but God, thank you. Am I right? Doesn't that sound reasonable to you? But when you are living under a curse... When you open the door to sin, you go the direction of reprobate. Because immediately after him demonstrating the power of God as as a result of the anointing on his life, it says what? After this, he loved a woman whose name was Delilah. Did you ever think about the insanity of carrying that level of anointing and yet going repeatedly back to sin? Point number one. The power of God on your life is not ever an endorsement of your character. Oh, okay. It's an affirmation of Christ's love for the people you're ministering to. 
What happens when a man or woman of God ministers is more a reflection of Christ's love for the people being ministered to than it is an affirmation of the character of the person doing the ministry. That's why they're going to stand before him in judgment day and they're going to say, I cast out demons in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me for I never knew you. I may have used you, but I never knew you. I used you for their sake. I called you Samson for the sake of Israel. The blessing on your life isn't for you. It's for my people and he will bless them despite you. So in foolishness, We put too much glory on the vessel and not enough on the one filling the vessel with the power to do the work. The power of God is not ever an endorsement of your character. We see that with Samson. Oh, I've got good news, by the way. I'm not doom and gloom. I'm new covenant. Stay with me. But there was a spirit in operation because later on in Samson's story, his eyes are gouged out by the Philistines and he's standing between two pillars in, in, in a temple. But for the, how many of you like to go deep? Okay, I'm not going to hold back on you. If you don't understand one of my $40 words, you look it up, okay? So he's standing in front of two pillars in the temple of Dagon. Dagon... Secular historians say he's the father of Baal. So we're talking about a high-ranking spirit. We've been dealing with Baal in the church. I came here to deal with Dagon. We're going up a level tonight. We're going up a level tonight. And in the very end, he's standing between the two pillars and he gets what I believe is a, is a type of prophetic revelation that this spirit of lust took me, but in one more moment of grace, I can take it out. And if God would honor me in this moment, I can push down these pillars. And it wasn't just the destruction of the Philistines. It was the destruction of the temple of Dagon, which was a God that was half man, half fish deity, which represented fertility, which was sexual perversion. And so when he pushed down the pillars, he was in fact saying, Lust in my earlier years, you took me. But in the end, I'm taking you out. In the end, I'm pushing the pillars down. Dagon, you're going if I'm going. We're all, come on, somebody. I don't know how you started. I know you may have relapsed into sin. But Samson, I see the end of a thing. And the end of a thing is always better than the beginning. And in the end... Dagon loses. He took down a high ranking demon. Now let's look at Saul, everybody's favorite Bible character. Saul was vexed by demons, he was under the influence of demons. Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 10. Now, y'all, I'm going to keep going deeper. Are you going to stay with me or are you tired? First Samuel chapter 10, verse 10. When he and his servant arrived at Gibeah, a procession of prophets met him. The spirit of God came powerfully upon him and he joined in their prophesying. So Saul, outside of the will of God, but in the company of prophets prophesied. Some of you have an atmospheric impartation, but you have not had an internal transformation. Oh, y'all aren't ready for me. I told you I was going to get you close enough to cut you. And you can get into an atmosphere like this and you can start prophesying because the atmosphere affects you. And some of you chase atmospheres because the external tantalates, but the internal challenges. The internal is where you receive rebuke. The internal is where you receive reproof. The internal is where the breaking happens. The internal is where the molding happens. The internal is where you say, God, change me. The internal is when you say, give me anguish. I want to cry for the things that break your heart. Lord, I want to be molded. Do whatever you can until I become more like you. It's the internal. I'm, this is a call to anguish. This is a call back to open rebuke where we willingly accept it. 
lest we become Saul that in atmospheres receive an impartation of prophecy, yet we are not prophets. And the only reason why Saul said something accurate was for the sake of Israel, not an affirmation of Saul. So an accurate prophet could still be a false prophet. Y'all, listen, you can cancel me after tonight, but I got that cockroach anointing. I'll see you on the other side. First Samuel chapter 28. I can't read it to you. I don't have enough time. But the witch of Endor is a woman, according to the Hebrew Bible, basically Saul consulted her to summon the spirit of the prophet Samuel. You know the story. But here's the thing. Samuel was dead. And so Saul in a pre, okay, follow me, follow me. Saul in a previous instance expelled, it's a deliverance term, expelled all the spiritists and the mediums from Israel. So he made a right decision by expelling all the necromancers and the ones that are talking to the dead. He expelled them from the land. But in a moment of fear, he seeks out the witch of Endor. What if some of you, it's your fear causing you to search out prophets more than your faith? I rebuke that. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Because Saul sought a spiritual experience, but the root was fear. And guess what? Many theologians agree that the true prophet Samuel was able sovereignly by God to be revealed because of the accuracy of what was said and the response of the witch of Endor, which was, whoa, I thought it was conjuring up a familiar spirit, but this is actually Samuel. Then guess what is said? You will surely die. And him and his sons, which is a generational thing, died. Follow me. But something you don't know, and it's recorded in your Bible, but you may not have ever had a pastor who actually preached the whole Bible. After he was killed, or fell upon his own sword, the Philistines went on a journey to go recover bodies. Watch, watch, watch. They found Saul removed his head and guess where they took his head this is in your bible they took it to the temple of dagon oh somebody's getting a revelation they took it to the temple of dagon same spirit different generation ancient demon new days See, I'm calling this thing out because the demon of Dagon is a lust for power. It's a lust for, because fertility is multiplication. Multiplication is necessary for the building of armies and armies protect nations. And so fertility in the ancient world was always a high value because the more fertile a people were, the more army they could produce. And so lust is connected to military might. And so what I'm here to help you try to understand is that there is a spirit of Dagon that has men and women of God trying to build demonic armies by multiplying them in the doctrines of demons, but God will raise up a Samson to push down the pillars, but God will always have a response and God will always say, you build your false army, but I see an army rising up to break every chain. Dagon, you are coming down. See, the first thing the devil tried to do here in America in this era was witchcraft through horoscopes and psychic mediums in the new age. But when the new age stopped working because we exposed it, the devil says, I'm now going to take on one of my favorite tactics to show up as an angel of light because the greatest deception is something that's similar, but not the same. It's a dupe and we don't need a dupe. We need the real thing. And the saints know the difference between false oil and the real oil. The saints know the difference for those who have intimacy in the spirit. The saints know the ones that fast. The saints. 
you may fake out an audience of new believers, but the saints know when the oil is real. It's always been about Let me show you David now. I love this. David was a shepherd who became a king spending time with God. Saul is a king who became a warlock spending time with witches. It's always been about the wise walk with wise. So they're asking the question, Pastor Mike, this is a deliverance conference. Can a Christian have a demon? Here's the real question. You look at Samson, you look at Saul. Can a Christian forget who they are? A Christian who momentarily relapses into alcohol and drinks still feels the influence of that alcohol on their body the same way who someone who's not saved. Because saved or unsaved, you can't escape the influence once you ingest it. This is just like the demonic. You ingest alcohol through your mouth, but you have a gate called your eye, the window to your soul. So when you view pornography in a momentary relapse, you come up under the influence of pornography in the same way that you come up under the influence of alcohol. So is it any different? Oh, but Pastor Mike, how can light and darkness have fellowship? Oh, Pastor Mike, how's the Holy Spirit and a demonic spirit dwelling in the same place. Well, dearly beloved, my special brethren, I adjure you to turn to Job chapter one, verse six, where Lucifer himself granted access to stand in the throne room of heaven and yet wasn't vaporized. So how could Satan himself stand before the unveiled God of the universe and not be vaporized? How can cancer live in the body of a Christian who's a new creation? Homie, it's because your body didn't get new created. I don't know how else to say it. And so you see Saul, anointed by God, relapsing back into sin, reprobate, vexed by demons. You see a Nazarite Samson going back repeatedly. Here's the thing you have to understand. Saul was a king by title, but at times he forgot who he was. Samson was a Nazarite by title, but in moments of desire, he forgot who he was. Saul came up under the influence of jealousy when he stepped outside of his position as a king. Samson came up under the influence of lust and perversion when he stepped outside of his position as a Nazarite. The ministry of deliverance in this next era, it must flow from true identity. The most powerful method is not an incantation that you're repeating from a John Eckhart book. I was trained directly by John Eckhart in the late 90s. I recently had him on my YouTube channel. Some of the comments of the people were saying, I'm so disappointed. I wish that there was, I wish he went more into depth. And I said, you revealed your own foolishness in saying that. If everything that somebody says sounds like a new revelation, it's because it's heresy. And our appetite for a new revelation has caused us to chase after people dispensing heresy. Sometimes the people like John Eckhart, the most prolific writer on deliverance in the 21st century, aside from Pagani, who's rapidly catching up, and Greg Glock, who's got a new book, buy it in the comments now. God on my broadcast, and he said, the action of casting out demons is easy. You expel them, you cast them out. But he was speaking from the realm of identity, but then some of these theologians are speaking from the realm of complexity. And see, what happens is you cannot replace identity with complexity. A complexity without identity will nullify the anointing. But where you have identity and no, compl no complexity, there will be a demonstration of the anointing. And so what I've seen in the ministry of deliverance is more an emphasis of knowing than being. 
Y'all are ready for this, sir. You're not ready. Spend three hours in prayer and see how demons respond instead of three hours learning another thing that you're not even going to use. Uh, there's something about, I don't want, yes, yes, we learn. Yes, we study to show ourselves to prove. But when you elevate the desire of knowledge above the desire of his throne, you will end up with methods but no identity. I want to be rooted in Jesus Christ. The demons are listening to him him through me so I want to know him I want to know him okay this is going to blow your mind Samson died pushing down the pillars of the temple temple of Dagon When Saul died, the Philistines cut off his head and fastened it to the temple of Dagon because whatever you tolerate dominates. So what is the lesson? Whatever you tolerate dominates. Why are you making such a big deal? Listen, if you see one mouse in your house, you've got an infestation. If you see one, come on somebody, whatever you tolerate dominates. It's not about killing one. It's about removing the replication ability from the one. It's the seed that the mouse carries to replicate. We are contending now for seed because multiplication is how you make armies. So the enemy wants you to tolerate one knowing that from the one he will generate multitudes. That's why they were commanded in the Old Testament to kill and eradicate all of them because they understood the potential of seed. That's why some of you got fought before you were Christian. It wasn't because what you've done. It's because of the seed that's on on the inside of you. Some of you got books in seed form you haven't released yet. Some of you got movies on the inside of you you haven't released yet. Sometimes the devil will attack a seed because he knows how to read a seed. You're just looking at a failure, but he's seeing an entire orchard in the size of a seed. High-ranking demons will allow you to have moments of great power. They'll even allow you to have your moment, but in the end, take you out. Don't let moments of power take you away from a lifetime of submission. You're a Nazarite. You're a Nazarite. You're a Nazarite. You're a Nazarite. You're, you're not trying to get away with something. You're not trying to justify something. Last time you justified it, you saw the slippery slope that took you right back to the temple of Dagon. You're a Nazarite. You're a Nazarite. I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you up. I'm calling you up higher. I'm calling you up to your destiny. You're a Nazarite. Oh yeah, they might be able to listen to it, but you can't give ear to it because you're hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's going to sound like legalism to those who don't have a revelation of his spirit it's not legalism it's a choice it's worship it's reckless abandon it's me crawling on my knees i'm never going back to anything that resembles the filth that he saved me from you're a nazarite You're a king. Saul forgot the power of the Hebrew God. I did a tour through Israel, and the historian was showing me from location to location. We won there. We won there. We won there. We were outnumbered, but we won there. And I said, what's the secret? He said, I'll tell you the secret to the Israeli army. It's always us plus one. When you beat all of us, you cannot beat the plus one. Saul forgot that he was a king and he forgot the plus one the king of all kings deliverance is not the source of our identity it's the result of functioning in our identity many of you have asked me in the comment sections of my videos well what do i do if there's a stubborn stubborn demon that won't come out What do you do when it just feels like it's taking forever? One of my favorite things is for my teams at our churches to struggle with a demon and then for me to walk over there and finish it. And they're like, well, what was the difference? I want to help answer this question. 
Not that everyone comes out that easy. First time I preached at Pastor Vlad's church. How many of you love Pastor Vlad? I said, Lord, there's so many demonized people come to his church to see me. Let it be easy. I came off the stage. The demons were flying in every direction. I said, thank you, Lord. I'm tired. But I'm going to give you a revelation. Because those demons are assuming that you don't know who you are to the fullest extent of your identity. The reason why demons don't come out and it takes you a long time is because they're assuming that the longer they resist you, the more you will begin to cloud your thoughts with doubt, the more you'll start to question yourself and they're playing a game with you. But when you stand resolute in your identity, it gives you access to more of the power of God to flow through you. And so for those of you who are dealing with stubborn demons, you've got to know who you are in Christ because from that place of identity, you will begin to operate in a higher realm of authority. Okay, let me make this plain because y'all didn't shout loud enough for that. So let me, let me, hold on, hold on. I'll help you. I heard somebody say, break it down, preacher. So I have two daughters, Bella and Everly. And when they were younger, they were playing upstairs in our New York City apartment, and they were playing with their toys. All of a sudden, Bella came down and she was crying. Everly won't share her toys with me. <laughs> and I, I didn't want to deal with it. I just said, tell her dad said, share the toys. And she walked upstairs. Dad said, share the toys. And Everly, who's the boss baby of the Signorelli house, who never listens to anybody, complied with her sister's demand. But not because her sister had the authority, but rather Everly feared the consequences of her father who had empowered her to say it. So I don't know who needs to get a revelation. The demon's not listening to you. The demon's listening because dad said so. Cancer? Die, because my dad said so. Devil, get up and out, because my dad said so. I know who I am. You don't fear me, but he's coming for you. Somebody shout, dad said so. It's about your authority through identity. It's always been about identity. Woo. Cancer doesn't respond to Mike Signorelli, but it responds to my dad through me. <laughs> oh. Leviathan doesn't respond to Mike Signorelli, but Leviathan responds to my dad through me. Oh, my dad. And see, I, this is why it's funny they call me Papa Sigs, because my dad, he committed murder. He went to prison. He died prematurely. I had multiple abusive stepdads. The most broken image in my life was the image of father. But wherever there is brokenness and perversion, there is purpose. And so what happens is, come on, somebody, fathers give identity. Fathers have naming rights in the Jewish tradition. There's something about the father that carries the lineage of even a surname. There's something about the ancestry. And some of you come from broken lineage, but you get grafted into the gospel, sown into this tree where Abraham and Isaac and Jacob become your forefathers that went before you, all the way through a prostitute to Jesus Christ himself. And so when the devil looks at you, he doesn't see the mangled deep. DNA, the, the lineage of failures that come before you. The devil looks at you and sees the DNA of Jesus Christ. You speak with his mouth now. You look with his eyes now. You hear with his ears now. Shine, come out, somebody. We got the DNA of Jesus grafted in to this mortal body. It's always been about identity. And that's why God has assembled orphans to come together and host his glory. 
I never had a dad consistently in my house more than two years. And those men didn't look like me. I'm writing a book right now about ancestry and generational things, and it's gonna be a really crazy experience. But on that journey, I went back to Sicily where my father's side of the family are, and it was surprising everyone actually looked like me. And I say that because oftentimes many of you are carrying the wounds of feeling like no one looks like you. You've gone to church and haven't identified with anybody. You've gone through life. Some of you have become leaders in the church and haven't been able to ever feel comfortable. I don't know. I'm just going to bear my scars with you. But sometimes what you call introversion is actually just a wound. And that's the story of Mike Signorelli. And I think about the sons of Sceva in the book of Acts who found their identity and power but true believers find power through their identity in Christ. Think about what I'm saying. The sons of Sceva had a father who was, a gener he was actually a generation above them, the high priest, the Jewish high priest. And he commissioned them, and they began to do itinerant ministry where they would say, I adjure you in the name of, of Christ whom Paul preaches, and these demons beat them ruthlessly. So they had a biological father, but that father did not transmit the DNA of heavenly father. And what that turned them into is parlor trick, masquerading, come on, fake dupe ministers. And so it's possible that you can have a biological father that never introduced you to heaven heavenly father and it will distort your calling on your life and then you got Paul Paul was a Pharisee who came into the presence of Jesus and became an apostle the seven sons of Sceva were sons of a chief Jewish priest who became charlatans even in the presence of true revival so here's my third and final point the same boiling hot water that softens a potato hardens an egg Oh, somebody knows where I'm going. The same boiling hot water that softens a potato hardens an egg. You give a pandemic to Greg Locke and you're going to get a multi-site international global church as a result of some pressure. You put that boiling water and you're going to see what it does to people around them. And guess what? Trouble is coming, but it only activates the warrior on the inside of the warrior. If you're not a warrior, you lay down and die. But if you're a warrior, bring the pressure. Let's go. Somebody shout, let's go. It's always been about how you deal with pressure. Woo! That same pressure. The pressure of being a Nazarite drove Samson to a prostitute. The pressure of being king drove Saul to a witch. The pressure of ministry success drove the sons of Sceva to parlor tricks. But the pressure of the lion and the bear made David a giant killer. The pressure on Saul, come on, and turn him into a true apostle. Don't forget who you are. It's the reason why you didn't kill yourself when you thought about it. I'm dealing in destiny right now. It's the reason why you didn't kill yourself even though you obsessed over it. Because there was something, there was a seed that was begging, let me out in the world. Let me accomplish that which God has destined me to accomplish. It's the reason why you were driving your car and you know at that very moment you made a decision and the tears rolled down your eyes. It's the reason why you tuned into something on the internet and got a word from the Lord and decided now I will move forward instead of shrinking back. It's the reason why you keep waiting it's the reason why you haven't given up yet because eye has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered into the heart of man that which God has prepared for us it's because he said that if he's faithful to begin a thing he will see it through till completion it's the reason why you showed up to this conference it's the reason why 
It's the reason why you stayed every day. Because you know, if I'm not dead, it's because I'm not done. Woo! I feel, I feel an anointing. I feel an anointing. The band might just have to come up and start helping me right now. Oh, come on. You don't get better at deliverance. You become more surrendered to the deliverer. You don't get better at deliverance. You become more surrendered to the deliverer. And the mighty hand of God's favor comes upon your life. And the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Come on, stay, stay up on your feet. I feel the power of God. I will not have as the fruit of my ministry a whole bunch of competing orphans. We will celebrate us. Competition will have you rejecting the ones that God brought into your life to elevate you into greater levels. We are David's, not Saul's. It stops with us. We are going to be a pure breed of revival babies. We're going to be a pure breed of deliverance babies. We're going to be the firstborn of a new breed of righteous men and righteous women. We're not going to be 99% surrendered. We're going to be 100% surrendered. We are not going to let Dagon's temple continue to be erected in America, but we will pull down the highest ranking demon. We will pull down the highest ranking spirit because an army is rising up and we carry his glory in our wings not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord not by might nor by power but by my spirit Deliverance has got us seeking might and power, but those who will function the most powerfully in deliverance will be those who know it's his spirit. It's always been about identity. Oh Lord, I'll be nameless. Oh Lord, I'll be faceless. Oh Lord, I'll go where you tell me to go. Oh Lord, I'll embrace obscurity. Oh Lord, I'll go intentionally into hiddenness. Oh Lord, I will receive rebuke. Oh Lord, I will humble myself before you because I know it's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by your spirit. It's by your spirit. It was the spirit that overshadowed Mary and Mary began to conceive. She conceived Christ Jesus. Jesus. And so when we are still, he all of a sudden begins to conceive things in our life. Be still. It was Moses that experienced the deliverance of a nation, not by his might, not by his power, but simply by being still and allowing the Lord to part the Red Seas. Come on, I've got my back to you because I'm leading you in. We're going into the glory together now. We're going into the glory. Catholicism says, confess to a priest. But the Bible actually says that we confess to Christ only before the throne of grace. The veil has been rent and now we can behold him face to face. Moses said, show me your glory. It's always been the heart's cry of deliverance people to want to see the glory of God. It's not about deliverance for deliverance sake. It's deliverance so that we can see his glory. Every home right now. 
Come on, open up that river of living water. Come on, the word has been deposited. Come on, it, it already had its effect. Open up that river of living water. Let's go into the realm of his presence together. Yes, come on, unapologetically. from your belly somebody's driving in a car right now release that song somebody's at home right now turn that up let your husband hear you release that song from your belly right now come on yeah
going out in the spirit all over this place right now. There's many people, no human hand. In the last season, you desired for a human hand to touch you. But now you have learned how to touch the hem of his garment. Now you've learned how to enter a realm of his presence. Come on, keep digging. Something special happens in overtime. Something special happens in overtime. Something happens at the end of you is the beginning of his glory. At the end of your strength is the beginning of his glory. At the end of your strategy is the beginning of his glory. At the end of your plans is the beginning of his glory. At the end of your, come on somebody, at the end of your knowledge is the beginning of his glory. Reach the end of yourself right now. Reach it. Say, God, I don't have a plan. being delivered right now by the finger of God every last lingering spirit come out now you're not going home with it some of you as the glory increases right now deliverance is happening every last vestige of the enemy go now every orphan spirit every spirit of jealousy every spirit of competition, every spirit of confusion, every spirit of prostitution, every curse over finances be broken, every lingering spirit out in the presence of the glory. Many of you right now are receiving the last bit of deliverance. See, when the glory increases, the intimidation increases. And the devil says, I'm being confronted now because surrender is full surrender. Come on, let's take a few moments because this is happening exactly like how the Holy Spirit showed me. We're going to allow a little bit of time because as the atmosphere continues to be infiltrated by the glory, you guys, what's happening is that the intensity of your desire is provoking demand. Where there is a demand, there is a supply. Where there is a demand, there is a supply. America is learning how to pull. America is learning how to withdraw. America is learning how to transact the glory. America is learning how to put a pull on the glory and the anointing of God. Where there is a demand, There is a supply. More healings are about to break out right now. I speak to every nerve, every tendon, every fiber of their being. Be healed right now. There's healings in the glory. Now in the name of Jesus. MS, be healed. Chronic illness, be healed. Fibromyalgia, be healed. Deaf ears open now. Deaf ears open. Hearing increase. Mobility restored now. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Hey. There is power in the name of Jesus. 
wheelchair. And they're saying no more. Bring the wheelchair. Bring the wheelchair. How many of you believe that this thing is going to remain empty after tonight? When we said an army is rising up, we mean rising up out of wheelchairs. When we said they're rising up, this army's coming up out of wheelchairs. Somebody say, do it again.
on, bring it up. Come on. This is the grand finale. We're shifting into the glory. We're shifting into his presence. We're shifting into identity. Come on and keep coming. Hey. Saul died, but David danced. Saul died, but David danced. Saul died, but David danced. has exchanged cigarettes for vapes but what is vape it's flavored vapor what are we called to we're called to worship what is worship it's incense there was an aroma of incense that would rise and we've exchanged the aroma of a vapor for the aroma 
of worship. But God told me the same ones that take a vapor in their lungs will exchange a vapor for my breath. And then I will release from my breath in their lungs. I, the Lord, God will release a worship through them. And this generation will not be a generation that vapes. It will be a generation of the fragrance of my presence. The fragrance and the aroma of my glory. We are going to make an exchange tonight. about to come all over i'm gonna pray for you just lift both of your hands right now in the mighty name of jesus i release the anointing of breakthrough onto your life right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet i release an anointing upon your life and you're going to take many men through a process of dis- deliverance and i see the lord saying from delivered to discipled to destiny delivered discipled destiny delivered disciple destiny come on delivered discipled destiny delivered discipled destiny it doesn't stop at deliverance it starts at deliverance but it ends with us fulfilling our destiny through jesus christ receive it receive it September, the number 
with 67 generations, but there's a new generation, a royal priesthood. I see an army arising to break every now in the name of Jesus. Look at this. It just keeps coming. Look at this. Wow. Wow. Look at this. In the book of Acts, this is what you saw. People being provoked to lay things down. Wow. it devil put this in your pipe and smoke it we're not relapsing we're not going back because we don't belong to you anymore we are Nazarites we are Nazarites put this in your pipe and smoke it devil
keep coming. is you're going to have to reintroduce yourself to the people waiting back home. You're going to have to look at them at work and say, you don't know me. You're going to have to go home to some people living in your house and say, you think you know me, but you don't know me. New me, new bank account. New me, new mind. New me, new determination. New me, new clarity. You don't know me, devil. This is a new me. This is a me that you feared. This is a me that you fought. This is a me that you thought you were going to stop. But this is a me that's stepping all the way in right now. You don't know me. Sacrifice, there's fire. Wow. Wow. You know what I find interesting about all these pills? Is whenever you have pills, they prescribe the frequency. How often?
often you have to take it. Isn't it funny how Daniel prayed three times a day? Let's exchange a pill for prayer. Let's make an exchange. Come on, if the Muslims can get multiple breaks at work to pray, if the smokers can get a smoke break to pray, why don't we go back and say, I'm a Christian, let me pray. I'm a Christian, let me pray. You're going to let the Muslims pray? You're going to let the smokers smoke? Well, I speak in tongues. How do you like me now?
say something. Greg, I want to, I got to prophesy over you. Because I, I got a profound revelation earlier today. And I said, Lord, you have to show me what it means. Can you all reverence this word? And I know a little bit about your story. And I know a little bit about what you've been through. And so for me, as a young man with brokenness in my life and fathers coming in and out, I never knew what it was like to abide with a father because fathers would leave. And the Lord showed me that there's a special mantle on your life. And of course it includes deliverance, but it's a mantle of abiding because you host his presence under this tent. And what happens is you're, see, I wanna show this to the crowd even those watching online, but because of the consistency of this man, some of you have actually shifted out of PTSD. You have shifted out of a, a trauma response. And the Lord said, because of your faithfulness of consistency, Greg, you have created a father's heart environment where they are allowed to abide in his presence. Some of you, you have an unusual desire to come into this tent because he's created the father's house and a place of abiding. And the Lord said, the first step was I used you to deliver the orphans. But as I drew the orphans to you and you acted as a father to deliver them, the next step is that you will host my glory and you will have the orphans in a realm of my glory where it will be. Now, this is the way I'm seeing it in the spirit, like a thousand Christmases in a day. And for every lost memory and for every lost year, the orphans who are now sons and daughters will abide in my glory in a habitation that you have created. And there is a stillness that's coming over many of you. There's a peace that you have not known. And today marks the end of a striving for many of you. Some of you just suddenly feel like a burden lifted off of you. And Greg, you have been a conduit for that burden to be removed because Whew. the Lord God in heaven honors you because where many false fathers have left you have stayed and it's been your tenacity it's been your boldness it's been your willingness to dig in see your stubbornness is it's hard for people to ballot when they don't understand but it's this it's the attribute of a dad because a dad says I'm not leaving and there's something grafted in you and you're a protector and when you say things see the thing is to the world you are a talking head but to heaven you're a father because see that opinion you have is only an opinion birthed out of compassion because you looked at your children you said i'm not going to let this happen on my watch but the lord says now i'm shifting you yes still deliverance yes a realm of prophecy and seeing in the spirit but you are not going to have in part you are going to experience in my fullness says the lord and this will be an epicenter of glory i want to say one more thing the lord said that there's been many prophetic words and there are people the lord says that are have even drawn geographically this tent this area in other nations and the Lord says I begin to prophetically call them and what marketing cannot do my spirit has done says the Lord and the Lord says that there are those that do not even speak English and yet by the spirit they know you they're coming with sums of money to transact another level to host my glory says the Lord and the Lord says that though there have been some against you there are many for for you and yet those people are mobilizing and Greg I see them drawing on paper I literally see see them having a visitation from the Lord to see this place and they will come and they're going to tell you over and over again the Lord told me to come to this place I didn't even know your name I didn't know the name of your church and the Lord says because I have given an, a designation and I want you all to hear this there's a key that's distributed and this key is only given to a few in each generation and it's the authority for history The Lord says, I have given you the voice of significance. 
The voice of your critics is not the voice of significance. For years is the voice of significance. And I have given you a key called legacy. And that key will transact history. And you will create a legacy that's repeated and echoed. But with you it will be different. Because in the preceding generations, the echo got quieter and quieter. But the echo from your life will get louder and louder. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. Can somebody stamp that with an exclamation mark? Can somebody put an exclamation on it? Can somebody say, let it be so? Let it be so. Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful. You know, we, we tell our folks all the time, we don't dismiss. We just say, see you next service. And so I, I really don't want to say you are dismissed because I believe the Lord's going to keep working in the tent. I believe he's going to keep working in the parking lot, in the overflow, online, in the Port of John's on the road, in the overflow parking. I leaned over to Wayne and I said, you know, last year we, we started filming and we didn't even know why. We didn't know that a movie was going to be birthed out of it. We had no idea. And I'm gonna be honest, this year's conference has not been a conference, it's been an encounter. And it is a hundred times beyond what we experienced last year. And I really believe with all of my heart, as the men of God said, for all of us and for not a movie, a movement. I believe that we are right now in the introduction to one of the greatest books in church history that God is ever going to write. And we get to be a part of it. A part of it, right here. We get to be a part of it. You get to take it home to your churches, to your communities, to your small groups, to jails, to rescue missions, to nursing homes, to homeless camps, to Walmart, Cracker Barrel. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom the Lord hath redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Everywhere we go, we just open our mouth and the Holy Spirit will fill it. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. It's going to happen. You're not seeking signs. Signs are going to follow you everywhere that you go. Stay in the glory. Stay right with God. Stay on the road of humility and repentance. Stay lowly before the Lord and recognize that any power you have is because of His authority, because of His presence, because of His glory. And we say tonight, Lord Jesus, we take no glory. We take no praise. We take no worship. But like glorified mirrors, we reflect the glory of God back to you. We give you what is rightfully yours, Lord. We say with Moses, show us your face. God, show us your face. So fill us. Keep delivering. Keep saving. Keep baptizing. Keep healing. Keep moving. Keep working. Keep filling us to overflowing, God. I pray that even people that are driving home tonight will fall under such conviction from the power of God that I have to pull off in a rest stop and get out of the car and get on their knees in the parking lot of a restaurant, in the parking lot of some gas station, and the Holy Ghost would come upon them so great for people watching right now. Oh, God, may the manifest glory of God show up in their living room right now. Right now in Jesus' mighty name. Send the angelic host to protect your people. Father, help us to stand. Having done all to stand, put on the whole armor of God. We're not going to back up, pack up, slack up, or shut up until we've been taken up by the glory of God. Take 30 seconds and give Him His praise.
They're going to sing. You can sing. You can worship. These lights won't go off. Conference may be to an end. But the encounter has just begun. The encounter has just begun. You don't need me. You don't need the other preachers. All we need is him. May the lamb receive the reward of his suffering. And all of God's people said.